Hello friends, this is actually the picture of Disney Concert House in Los Angeles. What's special about this uh, building? The special, special, this was built in 2003, okay. So in 2004, people living adjacent to this building, they were complaining that the temperature of their house increased by 8 degrees Celsius. It was as if they are not able to see anything. Even if the curtains were drawn, they were not able to see anything clearly. So they were complaining that this building is producing some rays because of which it is not possible to see the things clearly. So this is not the only case it happened. It happened with many of the buildings. One more I would like to mention is the Vadara Hotel. This is the picture of one more Vadara Hotel in Las Vegas. Here also the guest who used to come to this hotel they used to complain that their hairs are getting burnt near the swimming pool. Whenever they used to go to swimming pool, the temperature used to rise a lot and they were feeling the burning rays. And they used to call that this whole, this hotel or this building is producing death rays to kill us. These are the not only two instances where death rays were reported. There are many buildings which are supposed to produce rays like this, that is death rays. So, what is the reason for these buildings to produce death rays and are they really death rays and why they are called so? All these things we will learn and enjoy in this video. So, let us find out all the answers to our questions in this video and enjoy. Welcome to Vignan Guru. This is third video on light lesson from CBSA physics section. Okay, so in the last video what we understood, we understood characteristics of image formed in a plane mirror and we also came to know about spherical mirrors and some terms associated with spherical mirrors. So why did we learn those things there? So that we can continue our discussion. So let us continue our discussion on spherical mirrors. Are we going to just discuss? No, we are going to do some activities by keeping, see we know how image is formed in a plane mirror. Now we actually do know how image is formed in a spherical mirror. So what we are going to do in this video? In this video, we are going to keep the object in different places in front of spherical mirrors and try to get the image and understand the image and characteristics and how they can be used. So all these things. So what are we waiting for? So before getting into activity, we need to learn one more thing. So there is one acronym called as LOST LOST. So to understand the characteristics of image. So what is LOST? L means location of the image. That means where actually image is located like whether it is beyond C or you know at focus and all these things. And O means orientation. Orientation of the image means whether it is upright or it is upright or erect or whether it is inverted. Okay, so that comes under orientation. Yes means size of the image. How is the size of the image compared to the object? Whether it is more bigger than the object or smaller than the object. And T means type of the image. Actually, there are two types of image. You already know about the virtual image. And another one is called real image. Real image is an image which can be caught on screen. Like when we were discussing about plane mirrors, I had told you about the virtual image. Virtual image doesn't actually join. They appear to join after the reflection. Rays of light appear to join after reflection and virtual image is formed inside the mirror. It cannot be caught on screen. Real image, whereas real image, they actually meet after reflection. Rays of light meet after ref reflection and form image in front of the image mirror so we are able to catch them on screen so not saying don't believe me no how a real image works let us do the experiment to find the focal length of a concave mirror when the object is kept at infinity and try to get the real image of the object on the screen let us do the activity and understand everything 
So in this activity, we are going to find the focal length of the this concave mirror. So this concave mirror I have placed on a lens stand. This is lens stand. This is called as screen, white screen. So I am going trying to get the image of an object which is at infinity on this screen. Okay. So I am trying to focus an object which is at infinity, like some window or something which is very far from here. I will try to get the image of that window on this on this screen. Okay. So I try to move this. You can see that you can get the image of the you can see the image of the opposite house and you can even see the image of the tree there. You can see the image of the tree also there. Okay. So this is the image of the object which is at infinity. So the rays of light from that tree fell on this mirror and the reflected rays they have joined together to form an image on this screen. So now let us know the properties of this image that is L O S T of this image. As I told you, when an object is at infinity, image is actually formed on the at the focal length. So now the image is formed at now the image is formed at focal length. Now let us see the orient. So the location is at F and let us see the orientation. How is the image? You can see that the image is is it erect or is it inverted? You can see that actually this tree is inverted. So it is an inverted image. Next, yes, yes is size of the image. You can obviously you can see the size of the tree. It is very, very small. So it is forming the diminished image. And type of the image. We are able to catch this image on the screen. So it is called as a real image. Here what happens? Actually the rays of light meet after reflection to form an image on the screen. So these are the properties of image formed when the object is at infinity. Okay, you saw all the image. Now, you know, as I told you, using this technique, that is when the object is at infinity, image is formed at its focus. Using this, we normally find the focal length of this given mirror. So let me try to measure. Yes, I can see that the distance between this mirror and the screen is actually 18 centimeters. So the focal length of this mirror is 18 centimeters. So we have already found the focal length of this mirror. Okay, now using that focal length, I have already marked the equations. You can see here, it is one is pole, and this is focal length. According to focal length, I have marked this, uh, measured and marked this as f, and this is c. C is nothing but center of curvature of the mirror. That also I have marked. This will be double the focal length. So according to that measurement, I have marked. And, uh, actually, the focal length of this mirror is 80. So this is almost 9, and this is. Sorry, this is almost 18 and this is 36. Now, I will keep this mirror exactly on the pole. Now, we will try to see in that example, we used a uh, window as our object. That window cannot be moved. So, I am going to take this uh, candle as a bright luminous object and try to find the uh, image characteristics when I keep this candle in different portions like C, B, or C. So, let us start. Now I have kept the object beyond to it. Let me see where I get the image. And try to move the screen around this line. Ah, yes, I can get the image here. So what are the LOSD properties of the image? You can see that the image is actually, yes, now you can see that the image is in the LOSD properties. And is where is the location of the image between C and F? What is the orientation? Yes, it is inverted. What is the size? Size is very diminished. And what is the type? It is because we are able to catch it on the screen. It's going to change. Now I move the object and see. So we can keep the object and see. See, you can see the camera. So I will try to get the image. Yes, we can get a neat image exactly on. Uh, yes, very nice image exactly on. What are the properties L O S T of the image? Where is the location of the image? And C, where is the orientation? Orientation of the image is inverted. Size of the image, same size. Type of the image, real image because we are able to catch it on screen. Now again, I move an object between C and F. Location is beyond C, orientation is inverted, size is you can see it's little bit magnified than the original image, and type of the image is T, type of the image is TL image. Now again, I remove the object at F. So I'm not able to get 
any image because image is of that infinity so what will be the type of image if we already know the image will be very points yellow is the location is at infinity orientation is yes inverted size will be very point size and because at infinity if you keep a screen you will be able to catch it on the screen so it is a real image now let me keep this object But I am getting only glow. But I am not able to get image anywhere. So I try to see inside the mirror. So now you can see the image. So what are the OSB of the image? Location of the image? Yes. It is behind the mirror. And what is the orientation? Yes, it is upper, up, upright. And the size you can see is very magnified. And the type of the image because we are not able to catch it on the screen. It is behind the mirror. It is virtual image. So these are the properties of the image from where on the mirror and the objects are kept in different positions. So after going through all the activities, we understood through the activities what is real image, what is virtual image and character where the image is formed. Now let us first summarize what all we understood in our experiment. What we understood first, we understood that when the object was at infinity, or object, object was very far, image was formed at focus and it was for very point size. When the object started coming near, so as it came near 2F, the size of the object and the size of the image were both same. After that, the object started coming near the mirror then the image started going far away but when the object started coming near the image got magnified so what you have to understand when the object was far away image was point size when the object started at 2f at c both object and image both were of same size after c when it started coming near object start getting magnified so we can summarize everything in this table so this is how we understood we understood from the activity now after writing this you know that we have to represent this in the form of yes ray diagrams yes so let us discuss which are the four rays normally we consider while writing ray diagrams so these all rays follow only one formula the one rule what is that loss of reflection angle of incidence should be equal to angle of reflection and when you are drawing what are the things you should be careful about you should be careful about arrow mark and wherever the two rays meet that's the point where the image is formed okay let us start with the first ray first ray is called as parallel ray this ray is parallel in the concave mirror it it comes uh, parallel to the principal axis and falls on the mirror and after reflection it goes through the focus principal focus Whereas in a convex mirror, they appear to, after the reflection, they appear to go through the focus. This is the first ray. Second ray is opposite of this. What is that? Second ray is the ray which passes through the principal focus. And after reflection, they, after reflection, they go parallel to principal axis. This is second ray. Okay. And the third ray is the ray which passes through the center of curvature undeviated when a ray passes through center of curvature it uh, it retraces its path why because you know angle of incidence should be equal to angle of reflection when it passes through a center of curvature angle of incidence will be zero so angle of reflection should also be zero so then the fourth ray is called as oblique ray the ray which falls obliquely on the mirror and after reflection it comes out obliquely. So these are the four important rays which we consider. You can consider any two rays to draw the ray diagram. That's all. You have to keep it simple. So for us to make it easy, we are considering these type of rays. That's all. So we, we have everything now. We know the rules also. We know the positions also. Let's go and start writing the ray diagram. Okay, let us understand how to draw a ray diagram for different positions. Okay, so the first position is when the object is at infinity. So whenever we draw ray diagrams, instead for the object, we, rep you, we use arrow marks 
to represent object and the tara mark we represent by a b now the object is at infinity so from the object there are two rays which come out one is a ray which is parallel to principal axis they fall on the mirror and they pass through the focus after reflection see that both of them will meet at the focus to form a diminished point sized image which is again inverted okay now the second portion now we are going to bring the object little bit near now the object is beyond c again two rays one is a parallel ray falls on the mirror and after that it goes through the focus and the second ray which goes through the focus and then after the reflection it goes parallel to the principal axis you can see that both of them meet between f and c to form a to form a uh diminished image which is again you can see it is inverted image is also shown using an arrow which is because it is inverted it is shown arrow is shown downwards with the name as a dash and b dash now the object little bit some more we'll bring nearer now the object is kept at c now again two rays will go and same two rays one is parallel ray another one is the ray which passes through principal axis both of them again meet exactly at c after reflection to form a image which is same size as the object so this is a very special position where the image size and objects is both are same only the object is it's a real image and it is a inverted image okay now again we are going to bring the object little bit more near now the object is between c and f and again two rays one ray is again parallel ray another one is the ray which passes through the focus both of them again after reflection again they meet now the image is going far away now they will meet beyond c to form a now they will form a magnified image as the object is coming near the image is getting magnified but still it is a inverted real magnified image now again we are going to keep the object at focus now when the object was at infinity image was formed at focus now the object is kept at f then the image will be formed at actually let us see where it is formed two rays again will go from the object and actually they don't meet they appear to meet only at infinity we say that they meet at infinity to form a highly magnified image okay then now let us move the object little bit near to the more near to the mirror that is between f and the pole of the mirror this is one more special position why i tell you so now we will keep the object between f and the pole now again two rays one is a parallel ray goes from the object and that will pass through the focus after reflection another ray which goes from the focus actually see you can see that it gets diverged like this they actually don't meet but when you extend these two rays they appear to meet after reflection they appear to meet so it is a virtual image which is formed inside the mirror virtual magnified you can see that because the object is very near you are getting will you will get a magnified image inside the mirror so this is a special position wherein you will get magnified image of the mirror when the object is kept very very near so these are all the image characteristics and how to draw the ray diagrams for the di different positions in a concave mirror see in the beginning of the video i showed you few photos of some uh, buildings where uh, the object used to burn all of these actually contain concave mirrors and you know at the focus of the concave mirror the strength of the mirror the heat will be maximum at the focus so whatever comes near the focus of those concave mirrors they are getting destroyed so if you have any doubts please feel free to comment in our comment section and click the bell icon for updates thank you, thank you.